Hey everybody, it's Brittany at Barefoot Farm. Today we're going to be making sourdough bread. Everybody seems to be on the bandwagon making sourdough these days and so I wanted to give everybody um, a look at an easy way to make it. It doesn't have to be complicated. This is something that our ancestors made for hundreds of years and you don't have to have fancy scales or fancy equipment, um, but there are some tips, some rules that need to be followed. Um, so come on in, let's make some sourdough. One of the first things that you're gonna start with whenever you make your sourdough is having a sourdough starter. As you can see this morning, I fed my starter. And when I fed my starter, it was at this line where the rubber band is. And I know it's ready to go because it has more than doubled. And it, that means it's active and it's ready to make some bread that'll be um, risen. So I'm gonna add about a cup, a cup of starter to my bowl. And then to that, we're gonna add, I usually start with one and a third cups of unfiltered water. Um, I'll start out with a cup and it usually takes about one and one third. So I'm gonna start with a cup. Then we're gonna add two teaspoons of kosher salt. If you're using regular table salt, you probably wanna just use a teaspoon. And so you, either using a dough whisk or a spoon, you're gonna wanna incorporate these three items. Next, we're gonna add two cups of flour to begin with. Typically, it, it depends on the humidity in the air. Um, It'll take three and a half to four cups, typically. So we're adding the first two cups. We're gonna give that a stir. Now we're gonna add a third cup of flour. And see about getting that mixed in. Now we've added the third cup of flour and I'm gonna continue mixing. It's starting to come together, but it's pretty dry still. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the remainder of one third cup of water and get that mixed in. Okay. All right, this is probably gonna need another half cup of flour. So I'm gonna take about a half a cup. Well, that's a little bit much. Got about a half a cup. I'm gonna incorporate that into the mix and scrape the sides of the bowl, get all that flour mixed in. Right, it's starting to come together. All right, this mixture is a little, still a little too sticky. So we're gonna add a about a quarter cup more. A little bit more. So there's a lot of humidity in the air outside, so this mixture is gonna take, looks like the full amount of flour today. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit more in. I'm gonna mix it with my hand. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sticking to my hand, but I'm gonna mix in the rest of this flour.
A handy tool that you'll need whenever making sourdough is one of these dough scrapers. It's gonna help get dough off your hands, off your bowl, off your counter. Uh, it just, they're really cheap and inexpensive, something you can grab off of Amazon and it'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so now our dough is at a good, a good consistency and it's ready for a series of stretch and folds. There's gonna be about three stretch and folds that we're gonna do. Now that we have our dough mixed into the consistency that we're looking for, you wanna go ahead and cover your dough. I have one of these silicone bowl covers that comes in really handy. You don't have to waste saran wrap every time. But you can do this or you can do a, a, a damp towel. And this is now gonna sit for 30 minutes, um, preferably in a warm spot. And I typically like to keep it inside of my oven with just the light turned on. Don't turn on your oven, just turn the light on. And that will create a warm enough environment for this to do um, its first 30 minute rest. And then we'll see you back in 30 minutes. And I'll show you how you do your first set of stretch and folds. All right, it's been 30 minutes. And so we're gonna do our first set of stretch and folds. And what the stretch and folds are gonna do is that's gonna help create um, gluten structure in the bread um, so that it'll have strength to be able to rise and make a, um, a big airy bread for us. So you don't wanna add more flour to this, this dough and it's pretty sticky at this point. Um, so what you wanna do is take any, any rings off. I just use one hand um, and I'm going to get my hand wet and that's gonna help the dough not stick to my hand and get all over the place. And what you're first gonna do is you're gonna come in here and grab the dough, you're gonna pull it and fold it over. You're gonna turn the bowl and pull and fold it over. And you're gonna do this maybe about five or six times. Just keep rotating, pull it and fold it over. And if you find that it's sticking to your hand like it is mine, just put your hand back in some water and then go for it again, pull and fold, pull it and fold it. And then I like to kind of get it to a point where I can pull it up and fold it up under itself like this. Pull it, lay it, throw it down and pull it over. Kind of get it into like um, as much as you can in the shape of a ball. And then that's done. And then now we're gonna put our cover back on and put it back in the oven for 30 more minutes or in a warm spot for 30 more minutes. And then we'll come back and do the second set of stretches and folds. All right, we're back with our second set of stretch and folds. And you can see we're already starting to get some kind of, some kind of rise out of this. It looks like it's gotten a little bit bigger. So once again, we're gonna take our hand, get it wet, shake off the excess and come in here and grab, do some stretch and folds. Stretch and fold, do the turns. As you can tell, it's already getting stronger because when I'm trying to pick it up, the whole thing is coming up instead of sticking to the sides of the bowls. Add some more water. Do this a couple more times and then I'll try and get it in a ball again. Slap it down and fold it over. Slap it down and fold it over. All right. Now we got it into a nice ball shape. And we'll cover it once again 
for another 30 minutes in a warm spot and we'll be back. Okay, we have our third and final stretch and fold. I'm gonna wet my hand, do this again. Do this a few times. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, this dough is real nice. It's not really sticky and it's coming into a ball really easily. So now, so we've done the three sets of stretches and folds in 30 minute increments three times. Now, it's the really long waiting game and that's letting it do a bulk ferment. And that's going to basically be um, the dough sitting in a warm place for about two hours. Basically, you wanna take a look at, at your dough ball and you know when it's ready to be shaped, um, when this doubles in size. Um, it typically takes about two hours, um, but it's a really cold day here today, and our house is a little bit cooler than normal. So it may take three or four hours. Um, you just gotta have to um, keep an eye on it. And uh, But what you don't wanna do is forget about it and leave it out overnight and over, let it overproof because then that, that's not gonna make that's not going to make a loaf of bread. Um, you'll be making something else, maybe. Maybe a, a focaccia or something else, but um, it won't make a, a, a great loaf of bread. Overproofing. Okay, so it's been about, it's been about two and a half hours. It's now 7.30 at night. We had dinner and everything, and so um, I checked on the sourdough, and... It has doubled. So this is what we're working with right now. And so what we're gonna do, it's had two and a half hours to, to do its bulk ferment. Um, it's risen, it's doubled. And so now I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on the counter. And we're gonna do it pretty liberally because this is gonna be super sticky. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, shape the dough so that it's ready to be baked. We're not gonna bake it tonight. We're actually gonna shape it um, and then put it in um, a banneton. Um, it's a fancy word for this, um, this wooden bowl. And this is what a lot of um, sourdough bakers or bread bakers use um, whenever they uh, shape their dough and um, it has a chance to sit before baking. Um, but you don't need, even need one of these because I actually started out, this is a bowl that I got from, I think it was Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store or something. Um, and what I did is I used this bowl and I used a, a dish towel that I would put, I put a dish towel in here, or you probably wanna use a tea towel or even um, cheesecloth. And then you heavily um, put, put a lot of, flour on it so that the dough doesn't stick and and use that and I use that for a good while before um, my husband went ahead and bought these for me so um, anyways so what I'm gonna do is once again I got the handy dandy um, dough scraper here and this is gonna help me pour this out onto the the counter so we can get it shaped so we're gonna pour it out here. We're gonna use this to get the dough out of the bowl. And this is real sticky, so you wanna make sure that you have plenty of flour on your, on your workspace here. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna get some more flour. And I don't wanna put any flour on here. We wanna leave that sticky because that's gonna help the dough stick to itself so that it can um, form a tight ball. Because ultimately we want it to be in a, um, the dough to be formed in a tight ball with lots of tension 
so that it has the greatest chance for oven spring, which will make your dough rise really pretty and have um, those little uh, pretty pockets. So what we're doing now is I, I got some dough, or I'm sorry, some flour on my ha hands here, because what I'm gonna do is I'm grabbing up under this dough and I wanna kinda uh, pull it out. We're gonna try and make it into like a, a rectangle shape. So notice it's not sticking because there's plenty of flour on the surface. So now that we have kind of a, a rectangle shape, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this bottom part that's closest to me and I'm gonna fold it up about two thirds of the way here, okay? And then I'm gonna get some more flour on my hands because I don't want it to stick. Um, and then we're gonna pull these sides out like this and fold this over and then fold this other side over. And that's sticky there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this over like this. Well, actually, I got ahead of myself. What we're gonna do is start folding each side over each other, so like this. And it's gonna be a little sticky. But we want that because we want it to stick to each other. So keep folding. Fold it over all the way to the end. And then, it's sticky, sticky. All right, and so then we're gonna fold, roll it up. And kind of like roll it like you're rolling a burrito or something, or an enchilada. Just keep rolling, rolling, until we get this. And then what I like to do is see we have this part here, I like to fold it over once more. And we're just trying to make it so it's a pretty round dough. And so you can use your dough scraper and kind of use it to we're gonna pull or push and tuck and then turn and then push and tuck and turn. And as we're doing this, it's building tension on the outside of this dough ball. You, could, you don't even have to have one of those, you can use your fingers, but you're gonna pull it in and tuck and turn. And just keep doing this until it's got a real nice smooth surface on the top. All right. Okay, so that works for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I have my banneton, and so I never wash this or anything, and so this is just leftover flour. It stays in, in a drawer, and it has this little bonnet that goes over it, so nothing gets in it. But I'm just gonna liberally put some, some flour in here, kinda get it in the nooks and crannies, because I don't want it to stick. And then I turn it on its side and kind of distribute that flour in all the little nooks and crannies here. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my little dough scraper, and I'm gonna use it to flip this over into my palm, and then we're gonna place it in here. And so I want to still build more tension, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some more folds on here. This is the underside. So we're gonna pull this dough in until we can't pull it in anymore. All right. That looks pretty good. All right, and then, then I'm gonna dust a a light amount of flour on the top here. All right, and now this dough is not gonna be baked. What you, can, you, what you can do is if you wanted to bake it the same day, you wanna let this rest now for 30 minutes. And during that 30 minute time, you would get your, um, your Dutch oven <clears throat> or cast iron oven 
preheated in an oven. But we're gonna do that, I'll show you all that next, but what we're gonna do, since it's already so late tonight, I'm gonna let this do what's called, it's called a cold retard. So basically, I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap. And then I'm gonna put the little bonnet on top. And then this is gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. And what that's gonna do is not, the dough isn't gonna rise anymore, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna help develop more of that sourdough flavor in the dough while it's resting overnight in the refrigerator. So tomorrow morning, I'll see y'all back here again, and um, we're gonna bake some bread. So see y'all in the morning. Good morning, guys. Fixing to enjoy myself a hot cup of coffee on this cold morning. Um, but today we get to make our bread. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cast iron Dutch oven with the lid and we're gonna put it in the oven cold and we're gonna let it come, the oven preheat to 485 uh, with the Dutch oven in it and then we're gonna bake this bread. So our oven just finished preheating to 485 degrees. So I just took our dough out and I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready for, for the Dutch oven. So what I'm gonna do, I have a piece of parchment paper here and I'm gonna flip the dough out onto the parchment paper. So I'm just gonna put this on top and then go ahead and invert it like this. And almost all the time, it does stick a little, so you gotta jiggle it a little bit. And there it goes. And so there's our, our dough. And it has some flour on it, and that's fine. And I'm just gonna scoot this around the edge. And one of the things that we wanna make sure to do um, before we put this in the oven is we have to score our bread or score our dough so that it doesn't have just decide to explode wherever it wants to because it's going to release some air and, and things whenever it, it rises so so that we can make our loaf pretty and not have some explosion out the side of it we're going to go ahead and um and score it and you can do it any way you want some people do a cross down the middle i like to do um a cut along the side and this is gonna create what's called an ear whenever it rises. And what I'm using is, um, it's called a bread lame, and it's basically a razor. And so the razor is gonna cut through. You could use a really sharp knife. Um, you don't have to buy this. Uh, it's just whatever works for you. And then sometimes I'll do um, a pretty design on the side. So you just do some, some marks like this, some slashes like that, and then like this and you'll get to see what those look like once it comes out. So what I'm gonna do is get the Dutch oven out and we're gonna plop this baby in it. And we're just gonna pick it up with the parchment paper and easily put it down into the pot. And we'll cover it. Now it'll go into the oven at 485 for 25 minutes. All right, guys, it's been in here for 25 minutes and we're gonna take the lid off. All right, look at that beautiful thing. And that's the ear, that part that's sticking up. That's what I was talking about. So now, we're gonna put it back in here for another 15 minutes, but this time, 450 degrees for 15 minutes, and I'll see you back then. Okay, y'all, it's the moment of truth. 
Let's take our bread out. Let's see what we have. Oh yeah. All right. It's beautiful. Take a look at this. Look at that. Just gorgeous. But before I take it out of here, I'm gonna use my instant read thermometer and I'm gonna tip this bread and I'm gonna put it in right here at the ear. There's a like a little gap there between the ear and the bread. And what I'm looking for, I'm gonna put it in about halfway. What I'm looking for is it for it to be at least 200 degrees. Well, between 200 and 210. And right now, well, I just took it out. It was at 210. So this is ready to come out. So I'm just gonna lift it out with this parchment paper and get it on my cooling rack. Look at that. And take off the parchment paper. Now the hardest part of all is we wanna wait, we wanna give this a good 30 minutes before we try to cut into it. Um, but yeah, look at that. Look at that's that, those slashes that I did earlier. I did that. But yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a pretty one. I can't wait to cut it open and see what the crumb looks like. So now the hardest part, the weight. All right, y'all, my bread has been, been cooling. My husband's ready for a slice of bread because it's been driving him crazy smelling it here. So um, use your favorite bread knife. I got this one off of Amazon. Um, I can link it below if you're interested. Um, this is the best bread knife I've ever had because um, cutting through these is a little bit difficult. Um, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half so we can take a look at the inside. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks glorious. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is Cut a slice. My husband who has been waiting patiently. Tearing it up a little bit here because it's still probably a little bit too hot. So get a knife and butter this one up. And there you have it, guys. Homemade sourdough bread, still piping hot and ready to be enjoyed. Thank y'all for stopping by and I hope that you liked this video, I hope it was helpful. And if you wanna see more videos like this and just general cooking videos and um, grocery hauls and tips and tricks, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and visit us again. See you later. Bye.